let's talk something interesting history very recently we had a chance to visit azerbaijan the land of fire this is a fire mountain at baku in azerbaijan naturally burning mountain natural flames were appearing and disappearing in the european regions since 1000 bc it was a mystery until the natural gas was discovered you can very well imagine in an extremely cold place and a place where strong wind continuously blew natural flames is always eternal and spiritual it's incredible for them yanardag is the name of this fire mountain which in the local language means burning mountain there is a natural gas pocket beneath this mountain which causes the seepage of the natural gas through the porous layers of the sandstone when it comes in contact with the air in a certain proportion a small spark is enough to lit the flame There is a local story that tells about a shepherd boy who lit this flame in the 1950s. The mountain is still burning. The most amazing fact is that it takes millions and millions of years for the formation of natural gas, which is a byproduct during the formation of coal, which in turn is formed by the decay of dead plants and animals when subject to intense heat and pressure deep inside the earth millions and millions of years. Let's now travel to another place where an eternal flame is still burning. For me this was a completely new experience and I'm sure many of you watching this video will experience the same. We have reached the fire temple at Baku in Azerbaijan. A blessed moment. Okay, let me tell you the story of the fire temple. Almost 3000 years back what we now call the Iran was just starting to flourish as one of the greatest empires which is the Achaemenid empire Cyrus the great and his followers of this great empire developed the entire territory stretching from the deserts of Libya in the west to Indus valley in the east most wealthiest of the territories were the gantar and the hindush along side of the indus valley which eventually developed trading between the far off nations slowly the trading extended to china and the persians started buying silk from the chinese merchants and the chinese in turn was interested in their powerful horses from the persian region there was a wide network of road along which the merchants traveled for their trade and this road was initially called the royal persian road which eventually was called as the silk road the achaemenid style of governance was noted by many of the greek and roman historians The earliest kings of this empire allowed their people to follow their traditions, customs and religion provided they pay their taxes. It's quite uncertain about the native religion followed by the Achaemenids. But it's believed that there existed an ancient Persian religion which is called the Zoroastrianism. The ancient Persians were believed to be worshipping deities of the natural world. like the five elements of nature the earth the sky the wind the water and the fire many priests were using holy water for their rituals and made animal sacrifices to help the people come out from their miseries these practices continued only till the period of zoroaster or zarathustra he was born to an iranian speaking couple pauruchespa and dugdowa The Greek philosophers believe that he lived 6000 years before Plato. 
but based on the linguistic structure of their holy book the gathas the modern scholars believe that he lived almost between 1800 to 1500 bc zoroaster born with an unusual smile on his face was special and unique in his society he was in deep pain witnessing the hardships of life being witness the mysteries of life and the totally unacceptable ways of the ritual followed by the people in the society to come out of this mysteries made him think to find the truth for the next 10 years zarathustra renounced all the worldly needs in search of the ultimate truth with total disappointment and frustration he exploded to the nature roaring with rage but finally got enlightened the realization was he was born to announce the judgment of the god and he became the prophet of the god the wise lord ahura mazda his teachings had to face a lot of opposition as it was a revolution to the polytheistic religion that existed in the society until he met bishtaspa who was likely to be the king of kurasmia an area somewhere in central asia along the bank side of aral sea Zarathustra gained the confidence and acceptance by the king after a great debate in his court. He convinced the king by explaining the existence of evil is similar to a shadow which disappears when the object is brought closer to the light. And thereafter Zoroastrianism became an accepted religion. And the concept is there is only one god, the wise lord in the Avestan language they call him Ahura Mazda. and they just believe in good thoughts good words and good deeds he is the basic principle of life gathas the early hymns written by the zarathustra himself is their holy book they believe there is a fate awaiting individuals in their afterlife this is a motive for doing good things they believe after the death the soul must pass over the bridge of judgment the good enters the kingdom of everlasting joy and light and the bad to the consignment of darkness and soul fire is the symbol of their worship and they built fire temples as a place of worship and for religious practices but in the 7th century CE the persecution of Zoroastrianism has been recorded by the Muslim invasion of Persia the invaders destroyed many of the Zoroastrian temples and Persian libraries in 1990 a Russian archaeologist discovered the remains of what they believed to be a Zoroastrian fire temple in a bronze age site in Turkmenistan The Muslim invaders made the life of Zoroastrians living in Persia extremely difficult. And to escape from this, a group of Zoroastrians emigrated from Persia to the neighboring countries. Invasion happened between 633 and 651 AD. Zoroastrianism was a predominant religion in Azerbaijan since 1000 BC. They built a few fire temples in the country as there were naturally occurring fire torches here and there. The fire temple at Zurakhani town in Baku is considered as Mecca for the Zoroastrians. The pentagonal complex with a central courtyard surrounded by cells for the monks and a tetrapillar altar. The complex was built between the 16th and 18th century. The Silk Road made it possible for the people living in the northwestern part of Indian subcontinent to reach Azerbaijan for trading. The existence of this small idol of Lord Nadraja and that of Lord Ganesha in this fire temple in Baku is a great evidence that people from India were coming here. for trade or worship for whatever reason it may be the indians who might have reached this country for trading might have considered it as a place of worship because of their commonalities in their religious beliefs and the records say they used to travel since 2nd century bce through the silk road 
the inscriptions found in this temple are in two languages one is persian and the other one is indian The natural eternal flame went out in 1969 and later on it is lit by a gas piped from the nearby city. It ceased to be a place of worship after 1883 and the complex was turned into a museum in 1975. This fire temple was nominated for the list of World Heritage Sites UNESCO in 1998. The museum exhibits the life of the traders there in Azerbaijan. Thousands of camels and horses and caravans passed through this country every year as a silk road was running through this country. They used to trade silk, salt, jewelry, saffron and all that stuff. Do you all know that Zoroastrians live in India too? Honestly, I didn't know about that. A few group of Zoroastrians who emigrated from Persia during the Muslim invasion reached Gujarat in India and settled here as the Parsis. I am sure these are very familiar faces to you all and we are so proud to have them as part of Indians. My journey to know the history of the Zoroastrians and the Parsis started here at this fire temple in Baku and this video is that journey.